Is it recording? I think it is. Hi! How are you? I changed the angle a bit. Yeah. Um, in my first recorded video, I said this thing where I was thinking of throwing in some stories that I wrote because I want to be rich and famous. But I'm probably not going to be rich and famous by the stories I write, but that's why I want why I want to be rich and famous. But like I said, it's probably not going to happen because there, the likelihood of that happening is very limited. It's like, I don't know, one person of actually, of actual writers, like their stuff published, ends up making enough to get by on. So I seriously doubt that I'll be able to get as much money from writing as I want to. But I write stories. So I thought I would share one of them with you. I wrote it as part of a competition for NYC Midnight, a short story competition. It got me moved up to the next round where I wrote another story that absolutely sucked and I got, not kicked out, that's the wrong word, um, excluded from moving on. But anyway. I wrote it thinking of kind of a mix of things. One part Star Trek, the other part, another part, um, there's this episode of Doctor Who during David Tennant's run where there's, there's a spaceship that, that tries to fix itself by taking pieces of people's bodies and like, wiring and hearts or eyes and stuff into its mechanical aspects. So I'm like, well, what if there was actually an organic ship like that? And then I wrote the aliens thinking of the relationship of Captain Kirk with his crew. Uh, anyway, so this little story is called Sama. Super Automated Mechanical Acquisitioner. There are several parts to it. Chapters, whatever. Yeah. Chapter 1. On board the Terminator, closing in on, th on the third planet in the system Sol. Which happens to be Earth, in case you don't know. Captain, unless we can obtain more organic material to repair the ship, we will not be able to maintain orbit, crash, and, most likely, die. And remind me, Lieutenant, why do we need more organic material? Because I got hungry, Captain. Because you got hungry. All right. See that planet there? Isn't that called Terra? Doesn't it have organic s specimens on which on it which are compatible with the mechanics of this ship? Yes, it does. Yes, Captain, it does. There, on that continent. See that lake? Yes, Captain. Why is it that interesting green, blue, brown color? The readings say it is full of chemicals which are harmful to the native ha inhabitants, but harmless to us. Let's go subaquatic in that lake, then send out a salmon to collect some organic material. As you command, Captain. I have to scroll down. Two. On the ba banks of Lake Rainbow. North American continent, Terra, third planet of the system Sol. Do you hear that? Julia pushed her overeager boyfriend away from her neck in an, with an impatient hand. He barely paused before returning to kiss her. I heard nothing. She pulled at his hair. I'm serious, Cade. There's something over there in the trees. She pointed with a free hand. He sighed and sat back, winched as his spine banged against Julia's work bikes handlebars and set back up. There's nothing, Julia. Just go check. Cade sighed. All right. He slid off the bed of Julia's truck, grabbed his iPhone, and, using the screen light to guide the way, headed for the trees. He scanned the inside of the small wood for a moment, looked back at Julia, waved, and disappeared under the boughs. Julia waited for a moment before she heard another sound coming from the trees on the opposite side of the truck. She chewed her nails, twirled a strand of hair around one finger. It sounded as if it, whatever it was, was coming closer. She didn't want to stay in the open bed of the pickup. 
She'd seen that scary movie one too many times and climbed from the bed. She had just put a hand on the latch to open the driver's door when she saw someone in the window. My um, clock there is trying to chime, but I dulled it. Anyway, so that's what that sound was. Thinking it was reflection, she crouched and looked behind her. There was nothing. The moon was scattering behind broken clouds. The dying trees at the edge of the old lake were unmoved. The night was silent. Not really that unusual. No animals or not really that unusual. No animals or insects had been near this old lake since before she was born. Placing a hand on her heart to calm its rapid beating, she inhaled, then exhaled. Standing on shaky legs, she looked around one last time before opening the door to the pickup and scooting inside. She closed the door firmly behind herself. She wrapped her arms around the steering wheel before placing her head on her arms. After taking a few deep, calming breaths, she heard a whirring sound at her side. Startled, she turned towards the passenger seat and saw a figure. It wasn't caged lean form. It was a bulky form, which, as she watched horrified, shifted into a shape more closely resembling her own. Julia opened her mouth to scream, but a hand flashed out and covered her mouth with a painful grip. Shh! Julia heard the sound an instant before she saw a grinning, metallic face in the beam of moonlight and heard a sharp snap. Cade returned to the pickup. He had found nothing out of the ordinary. Discovering the bed and cab of the pickup were empty, he cast his gaze about until he saw Julia's form standing beside the lake staring out as if lost in thought. Placing her back against his chest, he pulled, pulled her into his arms and nuzzled her neck. She pulled away with a blank expression. I will leave this place. Shrugging, Keg followed her back to the pickup. She was probably mad at him for some imagined slight. Had Cade waited a moment longer, he would have seen the still surface of the lake broken by a series of air bubbles released as Julia sank beneath the acidic waves. Yay! Um, part three. On board the Derminator, subaquatic of Lake Rainbow. Captain, I've just received a message over IMS from Lord Mizar addressed to you. Lord Mizar? What does that cranky old pirate want? It seems, sir, he is claiming Terra as his property and is accusing you of trespassing. Very well. I shall meet with him in my chambers. Send the signal in there, Lieutenant. As you command, Captain. Just a moment, please, sir. Captain, word just came in informing you that we have received the first acquisition from Sama. It is being deboned and its organic material is being harvested and wired into the Matrix as we speak. That was fast. How many more acquisitions are needed to successfully make repairs, Lieutenant. If the first arrival is an example of the average mass of the life forms native on this planet, then we need about three more acquisitions, Captain. Very good, Lieutenant. Maintain current position. Four. Hedic Household, Amalora, America. She has some acting right, Avi. Do you think that boy did something improper to her? to her, do you? Avi, father of the family, shook his head while he flipped a pancake on the grill. She's a young lady, Samira. Soon she will learn a woman's silences. Samira raised a dark eyebrow. A woman's silences. Come now, you know what I mean. All women have their little silences. She's probably angry. He placed the pancakes on the plate. When she did not look up from a report on her iPad, he grinned. He made an espresso and placed it at her elbow. She took a sip and returned to her reading without glancing at him. See? A woman silences. Avi tapped the end of her nose. His wife looked at him with narrowed eyes while he grinned at her. Mom! Dad! Julia's greeting was clipped as she entered the room. I made breakfast a little bit. Have some while it's hot. He tilted his head to the pancakes. The twins already had theirs. I do not require nourishment. I'm going to leave with the twins now. Samara raised her eyebrows again. Avi shook his head at her silent question. Lexi, Alex. His voice rang through the house. It's time to go to daycare. A clatter of steps came from the stairs a moment before 
two dark-haired children, one girl, the other a boy, burst into the kitchen. One, the girl, was trying to put a Hello Kitty backpack on the same time as a My Little Pony jacket. Trying to force his feet into opposite shoes, the boy bounced around with his jeans unzipped. With a laugh, Avi knelt before the twins, helping each to arrange their clothing before soothing their hair, or smoothing their hair, and sending them out the door with their silent older sister. Now that they are properly attired, Samara sl slurped her expression so. Why don't you put on a shirt before the neighbors see you cooking half-naked? She continued to read. He grinned, curled his bare toes into the linoleum, and kissed her cheek. Come now, love, tis the weekend. He started putting away the shunned pancakes. 5. On board the Derminator, subaquatic of Lake Rainbow. Captain, we, we have received two more acquisitions from Sama. Good. We only need to wait for one more. At this rate, we'll be ready to launch before lunch. That should make old Mizar happy. Unfortunately, Captain, these two are quite smaller than the first. But how much are they smaller, Lieutenant? By my calculation, sir, each will only make up half of the mass of the first acquisition. So we still need two acquisitions for the mass of the first, of the mass of the first one, in order to successfully make repairs. That is correct, Captain. Well, so much for an afternoon launch. Six. O'Malley Residence, outside of Amalur, America. Sama brought the bike to a stop outside the small house. Kicking the stand down, she analyzed what she knew about the occupant. Patty O'Malley was an old widow with no children or living relatives. Small car sat in the driveway. The nearest neighbor was half a mile away. This would be an easy acquisition. Unslinging the messenger bag from her back, she approached the faded green door and knocked. The woman... Pa pa past a moment passed sorry i can't read my own typing a moment passed before she heard this the sound of slow footsteps a lock clicked and the green door opened hello julia how are you the old woman waved her hand to entreat entrance come in come in i've just took some cookies out of the oven they're not very good mind but i'm sure you'll want to take some home for the twins the widow hobbled into the kitchen. Stepping inside the house, Sama closed the door. I can never make cookies as soft or flavorful as your dad does. I'm going to have to ask him for whatever recipe he follows one of these days. I've been meaning to, but, well, my memory isn't as good as it used to be, you know. The old woman continued to prattle on as Sama crossed the living room and entered the kitchen. I'm so glad you decided to stay with the messenger service when you joined the cheerleading squad. None of the other messengers want to pedal all the way out here once a week to give me my mail. I don't like driving now the nowadays. Not with my eyes the way they are. I only keep the car for emergencies, you know. Julia, what are you doing? A few moments later, Sama, the old woman slung over one shoulder, reached the front door and removed the car key from the hook. 7. On board the Derminator, subaquatic of Lake Rainbow. Captain, we have received another acquisition. Is this acquisition the size of the first or the size of the second, too? This acquisition seems to be closer to the size of the first, Captain. Wow, I sound like I'm lisping really bad. Sorry. It is an older specimen, however. The engineers have informed me that it is within acceptable parameters especially considering the last two turned out to be young specimens. You're saying, Lieutenant, that they somehow even each other out? It appears so, Captain. How is that possible? I do not understand it myself, Captain. You might want to talk to the engineers. I might at that. How many more acquisitions are necessary? At least one more, Captain. If the next acquisition is slightly larger than the first, then we will have enough for organic enough organic material. We might have a late supper launch. Oh, and speaking of food, Mizar wants remuneration for the organic materials. I told him my lieutenant would be happy to pay. In fact, it will be coming out of his pay. Yes, sir. Eight. On the bank of Lake Rainbow. 
Pulling up to the sickly green and blue lake, Cade almost ran over Julia's messenger bike. He could see her standing by the lake, still in her messenger's jacket, gazing into the waters as if it held some sublime secret. Cade turned off the engine and approached his girlfriend. I got your text. You are needed by the lake. He wrapped his arms around her waist, pulling her back to his front. I guess this is becoming our special spot. He nipped her ear. That is not necessary. This will be the last time either of us will be here. Before Kate had a chance to puzzle over her response, she reached around him and flipped him over her back and into the lake. Acid ate away at Kate's skin, turning it into open sores. The acidic water poured into his throat as he tried to scream. Mechanical arm, like a long tentacle tipped with a snapping claw, reached out from under the lake and grabbed him. It pulled him under the surface, leaving nothing but air bubbles in his wake. Samud took a brief glance around to assure itself that no one had saw what had happened, and to make sure Patty's car was hidden in the sickly trees before stepping into the lake. The human guys at war melted away in the contaminated water, leaving behind an amorphic metal body. 9. On board their Derminator, subaquatic of Lake Rainbow. Captain, we have received the final required acquisition. Very good, Lieutenant. How long before we leave this lake? I'm sure the HP level isn't good for the hull. The response of the hull to the water is a definite negative, Captain. The engineers report the damage is required enough for, report the damage is repaired enough to take off on your order. Well, it looks like an early supper instead of a late one. Lieutenant, take us home. Gladly, sir. Oh, and Lieutenant? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. No more snacking on the ship. Understood, sir. Anyway, that's Sama, Super Automated Mechanical Acquisitioner. Um, let me know how you, what you think of it. Uh, it's one of my better ones, I think. My reading of it isn't all that good, but still, I like it. Bye!